First classical music performance in space at 25,000 km an hour, Blue Origin shares the latest pictures of his New Glenn flying hardware. This was the week for SpaceX hefty finds nearing the $1 million mark. SpaceX at Starbase was continuing his IFT-5 preparation and many rocket launches occurred this week. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space and this is your Space Update. The week in space started with a musical touch across the world and into space. Indeed, Sarah Gillis, recently in a Space Dragon capsule on orbit around Earth at 25,000 km an hour, was being recorded playing violin and the footage was sent to Earth using Starlink fast connectivity to be later replayed, coordinated with several other young musicians from orchestras and music academies across the US, Haiti, Venezuela, Brazil, Uganda and Sweden. The piece of music chosen was Ray's theme from Star Wars The Force Awakens by John Williams, which was out of this world. Great peace and brilliant symbol of unity dedicated to the resilience of talents of children around the world, well promoted by Sarah. Blue Origin has recently shared a few pictures of his flying hardware for the New Glenn maiden flight later in the year. It includes the second stage, which is preparing for a static fire of his two BE-3 engines, the same one you see on the New Shepard rocket. They have also shown the stage 1 pictures where the forward and aft sections, along with its strakes and fins, will remain unpainted, showing their thermal protection coatings. On the bottom of the stage, you could read, so you are telling me there is a chance? This is of course in reference to the fact that Blue Origin will attempt to land the first stage on a sea platform on their maiden flight, something no one has attempted to do before. And by the way, here is the sea platform named Jacqueline after Jeff Bezos' mum. I often show SpaceX hardware and I should look harder to find more pictures from other rocket providers. So that is all I could find on New Glenn for this week. This has been the week of fines for SpaceX. The Texas Commission on Environmental Quality has fined SpaceX $3.7,000 for not having the correct permit to operate their Starbase Deluge system. For the same issue, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, finds SpaceX with another $143,000. Then, as if it was not enough, the FAA proposes $633,000 in civil penalties against SpaceX for allegedly failing to follow his license requirements during two Falcon 9 launches in 2023. Now, all agencies have organized each other to find SpaceX at the same time for a total of $780,000. In contrast, SpaceX has been quite negative with the FAA, complaining that it takes more time for the FAA to complete their paperwork than for SpaceX to design a spacecraft. So, it seems to be tits for tats here. At Starbase this week, not much different was happening compared to last week. At the production site, more progress was made on the new buildings, Star Factory and is linked to the office building. In the Mega Bay, one Starship is getting his aft ailerons. At the launch site, the chopsticks are still being modified and SpaceX has now started painting the launch mount. At Massey site, there is still the preparation of this version 2 Starship prototype to be tested in what people call the Can Crusher. And finally, SpaceX has carried out the second static fire of its Ship 31, and if you remember this ship's vent was throwing fire some months ago, but luckily not today. The week in rocket launch started 
on September 14th with a Qayyum 100 launch from Iran by the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps for his mission Shamran 1. September 17th, the Krutnichev State Research and Production Space Center or KBKHA launched an Angara 1.2 for a military mission Cosmos 2577 and 2578 from Russia. On the same day, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 for his mission Galileo L13 from Florida. The first stage flew for his 22nd time and landed on a drone ship. September 19th, CASC launched a Long March 3BE from China for his mission Beidou 3 M2728. In summary, from January 1st until September 19th, 2024, 171 rockets were launched successfully. Out of that, 108 were from an American company or institution, 39 from a Chinese company or institution, 11 from a Russian company or institution, and 3 from an Iranian company or institution. I leave you this week with a picture of the very tip of our Milky Way galaxy by the James Webb Space Telescope, known as the Extreme Outer Galaxy, that's the nicer name, or Digital Clouds 1 and 2. That's the less exciting or sexy name. The brightness of these stars amongst the red cloud is striking and are attributed to bursts of star formation. What a beautiful display. I'm Christophe Paget for All About Space. See you at the next episode of Space News.